Today's video was supported by Cardo. I'll tell you more about them at the end of the video. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series. If you saw our reveal of our awesome new Z650 today, we're comparing it against its obvious competitor, the SV650X. Let's get into it. So this is our giveaway SV650X that we are shipping off to its new winner here in just a bit. And this is our brand new Z650 we're working with. Pretty spanking fresh new. If you wanna check out how to win this motorcycle, go to yamanube.co, sign up as a member, join our awesome community, and you'll get entered to win this, a Triumph Street Scrambler, and... CB500R. CB500R, there's so many bikes I forgot which one it was. <laughs> Let's jump into specs because these motorcycles are basically the same on paper. Spite, what's that bike working with? So this bike has the beloved kind of milk toasty, everybody either loves it or loathes it, Kawasaki 649cc parallel twin. Not exactly the most exciting, putting down 67 horsepower and 48 foot-pounds of torque. Weighs in at 412 pounds. We have a 31.1 inch seat height. And this bike costs you $7,749. And for that, all you get is preload adjustability, and that is the ABS model. It does look pretty though. It does look very pretty. It's, it's got this very monster energy, team green aesthetic going on, which again, love it or loathe it. So yeah. what, what about the SV650 over there? SV650 tried and true 645cc V-twin, punching out 75 horsepower, which is pretty awesome. 47 foot-pounds of torque. It's a little bit heavier at 432 pounds, wet and ready to ride. It does feature adjustable suspension for preload and preload in the front and rear. Don't know why I said preload twice, just to make sure you knew what I was talking about. And this bike is gonna cost you $8,399 in the showroom floor. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it does look neo retro and kind of cafe-like, so maybe Suzuki thinks that they can charge the premium for it. Uh, Spite, what do you say we get both of these bikes on the road and see what they're like to ride? Let's do it. Alrighty guys, we're out here now on one of Austin, Texas's most famous twisty roads, Lime Creek Road, taking it at a fun pace here. And Spite, how does the Z650 feel? Honestly, it's surprising me. Uh, I was expecting this bike to be a little bit because eh, of that parallel twin. But uh, I will admit a bit of mea culpa. This thing is actually surprisingly fun. It's, it's doing exactly what I need it to do. It's feeling torquey. It's chucking itself into corners all right. I am a little bit nervous about the tire in the back. Um, we've had it do a little bit of slipping uh, because it's not exactly the highest quality rubber. But I do, I feel like I'm having a really good time on this motorcycle. How about you on that SV? The SV feels awesome. I mean, this is its bread and butter environment. It's, you know, it's a little more leaned over than the other traditional 650 class bikes. And uh, you really feel it. And it feels like it wants to get on the side of the tire and have some fun. This one's equipped with this awesome Leo Vinci slip on. So I really get to hear that V twin working a little bit. And uh, I like the way it punches out of corners too. I get to rev it out a little bit. I think it gives the most appropriate kind of sport bike experience for beginners and even experienced riders alike. I mean, everyone knows that SVs make great track bikes and I can definitely see why. A pretty awesome bike to ride. And as I ring it out here a little bit, you can definitely ride it at a more aggressive pace and it really enjoys it. And while this bike that I'm sitting on here is not exactly the best in the business, I am able to keep up with you pretty all right. You know, I was kind of expecting it to fade a little bit more, but the suspension's doing all right, even under my increased weight. So, I'm, again, I'm just a little surprised by how good the Z650's feeling. However, I am noticing that it is a little bit cramped for me. Uh, it's a little tight for me to sit on, and the bars are all wrong. These, these handlebars are messed up. Yeah, so we were talking about ergonomics a little bit, and I feel like the SV fits really, really awesome. It's a little bit longer than uh, a traditional 650 class bike, and I can really tell and actually like it. It gives it a little bit more of a roomy quality. Um, I'm a little taller than the median average, so for me, I, I quite like that. And I think you fit pretty well on this bike too, right? Oh yeah, the SV650 fits great. This one actually does, like I said earlier, feel a little bit cramped. Uh, it, it basically feels to me like a bigger, punchier MT-03. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, however, what this bike does have that the MT-03 doesn't is a good front brake feel. 
Yeah, I actually quite like the front brake feel on the Z650. Um, I think it's a little bit better than the SVs, but I'll be curious to see what you think when you jump on this bike. A question I have for you that I feel the SV650 has this quality is, do you feel like the Z is rewarding to ride? You know, we're kind of flicking it through here, revving it out a little bit. Does it, does it feel engaging and rewarding? A little bit. Uh, it feels like, you know, your six tenths motorcycle. Uh, it feels like a bike that you can ride, you know, and give a good squeeze through a corner and then calm down with. Um, when you rev it out, this thing vibrates like nobody's business. Uh, and it's that super duper high speed vibration that I find really irritating. And it doesn't feel that great in terms of its ergonomics package when you're pushing it. So I'd say, again, it's your six tenths. All right, Spite, you ready to swap them out? Absolutely. I'm definitely interested to see how the SV feels back to back with this bike. Alrighty, everybody, taking off on the highway here to see the highway manners of these two 650 class machines. And the first thing you got to know is that either one of them, none of them have any problems getting up to highway speeds and cruising. 75, 85, whatever you want to do. Speed limit here is 60, so that's what we're doing just about. Spite, how are you feeling on the SV? Honestly, uh, those ergonomics that I loved so much out on the twisty road are not doing this bike any favors here, in my opinion. I find my weight uh, pressed forward a little bit. Um, you know, I might squeeze the tank to try and keep some weight off my wrist, but the, the forward angle on this is really exhausting to ride for a long time. Uh, and the seat on this motorcycle kind of sucks. It's basically made out of plywood. Um, there's not really much squishiness to it. It uh, doesn't feel like it's supporting me in the ways that I would like, but... Yeah, it doesn't support you emotionally. It doesn't tell you good things at night. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't support you, you know? It sucks. It really doesn't. I need, a, I need a little bit more out of my seats, honestly. Yeah. But the power is great, and it doesn't vibrate like the Z does, so it's it's a lot smoother to push down the highway. Yeah, this machine, you know, the ergonomics when you're bopping around slow speeds feel awesome because it's so upright and it almost feels kind of Motardi-esque. It feels like you can really get a handle on it. But, um, you know, at speed on the highway, I am getting buffeted quite a bit in my chest and I daily ride a naked bike. My scrambler's technically a naked, so it's not a huge deal for me. But um, I would, if this were my bike and I was doing long highway miles, 100% put some sort of windscreen to help me out a little bit and uh, get the wind sorted out a little bit here. And because it's a more diminutive bike, like we mentioned too, um, you know, it happily does highway speeds and there's no bothers doing it, but this bike's definitely happiest, I'd say between zero to 50 miles per hour. I think that's the best kind of spot for this thing. Uh, and it's interesting you mentioned about the SV's ergonomics because Although they are committed, they're nowhere near what a Super Sport is, like our Panigale V2 or the R1. So it's still mm -hmm. pretty amenable. Like I'm looking at you, you know, going along the road here. And, you know, your, your feet are still relatively low. Your hands are still a little bit high. You're a little bit more leaned over, but it's not that bad. So if anyone's thinking about getting that motorcycle, it looks pretty good. You know, it doesn't look too aggressive. It is doable. It is doable. But I, it, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, your half hour to 45 minute highway commute. I know a lot of people do that on their bikes and at the end of the day I would not want to get this motorcycle in this layout I would be much happier with a standard SV where my spine is a little bit straighter I'm sitting on top of my butt and I can put more weight on my feet yes it's not that aggressive it's about as aggressive as my VFR was before I put the risers on but I don't know it's still not to my liking yeah, and I see that you're doing that classic kind of, you know, super bike, super sport boy move of putting the hand on the hip and kind of pushing the back out a little bit, you know? Yeah, exactly. You gotta, you kind of gotta stretch every now and again. Yeah, what do you see? We hang it right up here and then we uh, swap and see how it feels. Sure. Oh man, already, already yeah. these ergonomics are so much better. What I will say, the thing that I like about the SV is that it, it, it's more substantial. It's a little bigger, the, the clip-ons are a little wider. This feels more like a more normal sized motorcycle. Again, the Z is kind of weirdly like 80% motorcycle sized. Yeah, it's it definitely feels a lot smaller. Um, I'm not sure what it is, 
but do you think that it's because they took like the do you think it's the same exact bike as the z400 and they just put the 650 in it i don't think so uh i don't think I, so either but it's so small it, it is really kind of tiny and i'm also noticing uh in terms of like general build quality i'm looking at the signals and they're flopping around quite a bit and they're actually pulling the plastic around on the yeah. front cowl now that we're at speed here it feels solid enough but i can't help but notice that wiggle going on down there yeah but i do like the mid-range punch on this motorcycle yeah i immediately noticed that you got to ring out the sv a little bit more and again it's only down one foot pounds of torque and only four cubic inch or cubic uh, centimeters and um I just I feel like you got to really work this engine a little bit harder, you know. One thing I'd love to see is uh, a comparison between passing power for these. Maybe do like a little fourth or fifth gear roll on and see like what it kind of looks like, you know. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I really feel the weight and just the more substantial quality of the SV for sure. This definitely does have some bicycle qualities to it because of how small it is. Yeah. It's really narrow. You know what I think it is too? This is a big beefy metal tank right here. You know, your main yep. point of contact with your legs is metal. Is this not metal? I think it's a plastic outer shell, but it's, it's definitely metal underneath, but, you know. Yeah, and the, the cutouts on it are really weirdly shaped and aggressive, and those guys just ran that red light, huh? Oh, they always do that. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Two, one... Yeah, I would say uh, that that result basically is within the margin of error given our weights. But the, my favorite thing about this class of bike is that because they have bigger engines, you know, you don't have to downshift to get around people, really. If you're in fifth or sixth, you can pretty much just... Yeah, although this bike does have just a little bit more grunt right away. You don't have to wring it out. You don't have to keep it on the boil. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like this. No, it really doesn't. All right, Spike, give me a pro and a con for the Z650 on the highway. So obvious pro for this motorcycle is its ergonomics package. The foot placement, the handlebars, the seat being nice and squishy. This is a really comfortable place to sit and just do 80 miles an hour in a straight line. And an unfortunate con for this bike comes from the engine and the unbelievable amount of vibration it puts out. The handlebars, the seat, your balls, your feet, no matter what, it's really shaking you pretty bad. Yeah, and sometimes you have to pay extra to get that vibration like with Manscaped. The Kawasaki's giving it to you for free right there. But the SV650 over here on the highway, a big pro for me is this engine. It feels really nice to get it on the boil, ring it out, hear that V-twin doing its thing. But a downside for me are the ergonomics on this bike. They're a little too committed for me for a long highway stint. I, can, I think you're gonna get a little uncomfortable with it and you're just not gonna be able to enjoy the motorcycle for maybe like 50 or 60 miles. But now we're gonna take these bikes out in the city and see how they feel. Alrighty everybody, heading into Austin, Texas in the urban environment to see how these two machines will do. Guarantee a lot of you thinking about scooping up one of these bikes will at some point take your bike deep into the urban jungle. So let's see how they perform. Spite, I get the feeling that the Z is gonna be quite a bit better around these tight little city streets. Yeah, I mean, obviously the ergonomics feel great. Uh, that's almost goes without saying, but now I can appreciate having a slightly narrower motorcycle. The bars being slightly narrower are better in the city yep. because obviously if filtering were legal, it's a lot easier to filter a narrow motorcycle than a wide one. Yeah. And the punch that this engine has is really apparent while you're dodging cars and potholes and stuff. And there goes a versus 650. That guy knows what it's all about, that man. Was an 80, that was an 80V squid that we talked about, right? Yep. And as a side note, no matter what bike you choose, if you're cruising your city, you can also enjoy some of the free taco smells like we are right now. That smells so delicious. Yeah, I'm getting a real hungry right now. <laughs> We are slaving away, guys, for you. We are doing this video for you, slaving here. <laughs> Someone has to do it. However, I am noticing that this throttle is really abrupt. Like, it is pretty herky-jerky. That was the number one thing I noticed on the Z once I first jumped on it is on-off is like whoop, 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 whoop. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, I used to think that the SV was bad. Now, now that I'm feeling it in town, it's, it's really abrupt. Yeah. How's that SV feeling though? I'd imagine it's probably a bit uncomfortable. 
you know, it's a little uncomfortable, I won't lie, but it's definitely not as bad as a super sport or super bike. Um, this is still pretty normal, uh, pretty, you know, comfortable ergonomics for me. Uh, you know, I, I think I could ride this all day long. And I think, you know, in the city, something I think a lot about is like, oh, how cool do I look on this bike? And I think for here in Austin, with this sort of neo retro feel that the SV650X has, I think it fits the vibe really, really well, you know? Yeah, I agree. That thing feels right at home cruising down like 6th Street or something yep. like that. Yeah, here we go. Get some crappy urban streets going. See how the suspension sorts itself out because the Z has a very stiff suspension. Yeah, I've been noticing that going over some of the bumps. It's it's shockingly stiff, actually. Yeah, the, the 400 set up the same way. It's just, it feels great on track and when you're being sporty with it, but for whatever reason on, you know, on, on street duty, it's like, oh boy, this is a stiff bike. Although you were saying that this bike doesn't necessarily feel so great when it's pushed, so... Yeah, that's it's it's stiff in a bad way almost, you know? <laughs> yeah, like just even going over these little manholes, I feel every single bump and groove. Yeah, we were on that one uh, road going uphill in the hills earlier and it was a little bumpy and you were like, oh, my spine! <laughs> yeah, it felt like it was sitting on that 48 we rented a little while ago. Yeah. With, that had all of its preload dialed in because that was that's, smart. That's not something you want from a Kawasaki, man. You don't want to. You don't want to compare a Harley suspension to a Kawasaki. <laughs> no, that is <laughs> not exactly high praise. However, uh, this bike is not getting hot. I, I yeah. feel really comfortable. These these parallel twins because they're further forward in the engine and you know they're all exposed to the air. They stay pretty cool. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, when we did our MT-10 versus R1 video and we were doing this same route pretty much and uh, we wanted to, to just die because of how hot those bikes were and how hot the day was. But yeah, this SV650 runs pretty cool as well. I'm not really noticing a super hot bike. I'm seeing the, the temp right here is pretty much right there in the middle. Uh, I feel really comfortable in this thing, man. Honestly, it's not bad. You want to switch over and see how they feel? Yeah. Jumping on the naked bike. Your green steed awaits. What would you even call this? If this is a naked bike, is this a cafe racer? Like, have yeah. they done enough to make it a cafe racer? I guess so. They've put clip-ons and they put a little fairing at the front, so a cafe racer it is. Sounds good to me. Oh, so comfy. <laughs> but yep. so small. I always come back to how small this bike is. This thing really is full size, which yeah. is appreciated, but goddamn, do I not love these handlebars. I also am feeling a slightly spongier front brake again as we're going down these little hills in the city. This bike definitely has a much sharper front brake feel. Big 103 American Freedom Machine right there. Mm-hmm. That's a real bike. If only we were on real bikes. One of these days, we're going to have to rent a real bike. We still well, haven't found one. Spite, we can only approximate what a real bike is. We can't actually get a real bike. You can't. You can know its speed, but not its position at the same time. Yeah, a Harley. You can only know if a bike is a Harley or if it's a real bike. You can't know if it's a Harley and a real bike. <laughs> you can't know. You can't know both things. That's ridiculous. Because <laughs> I mean, we we had the dyne in that one video, and people were like, "That's not a real bike." I'm like, "What the fuck? What? What is a real Harley? Somebody <laughs> tell me." They're like, it has to be a, a hardtail from 1982 to 1987, and you have to have the right forks on it. It has to make the right sound. It's got to be a, a 156 cubic inch. Yeah, getting back to the, the star of the shows here, the, the Kawasaki and the, uh, the SV. Um, yeah, this this is a really pleasant place to sit on the Ninja. Uh, it's really nice, honestly. Like, I could cruise around downtown all day long on this thing. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It's, it's kind of weird. They pulled some sort of bizarre engineering trick to make that bike feel as small as it is and i can say that i honestly would not like to spend all day on this motorcycle poodling around downtown like this yeah. i do appreciate the suspension having a little bit of preload adjustability so it's not necessarily as stiff from the factory going over these cracks mm -hmm. and while it does have a little bit of low-end grunt i still prefer the feel of that Z650's engine. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's literally only four cubic centimeters, but for some reason, it really does feel just way more punchy. It's how it makes the power, man. Like, 4,000 RPM, this thing's wide awake, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it's almost like horsepower is a vanity metric. Oh, you can't say that. 
We're gonna we're gonna ruin the sales of all the R1s out there. Alrighty, Spite, we've taken these two machines in the urban environment. Give me pros and cons on the SV650. So I do like the SV650 size and its cafe racer aesthetic feels really cool when you're riding around downtown. And while I don't wanna say the uh, con is the ergonomics again, because uh, obviously I don't love the ergonomics in the city. One con I will give it though is the brake feel. The brake feel is a little soft in an environment where you're riding that front brake a little bit more often. I'd like it to be a little bit more bitey, a little bit more instantly feedbacky than this kind of spongy Tokiko setup that we have on here. Yeah. How about the Z? The Z feels really good in the city. I like the compact nature of it. It feels like I can get around any kind of traffic that's coming my way. Uh, that vibration we experience at high speeds is not present in low speeds, so you don't even notice it, which I suspect was going to be the case. Uh, as you said, the front brakes on the Z are really nice. They're really stiff, and you feel like you can get a lot of travel through the lever. It really stops the motorcycle, and it's a really pleasant motorcycle to kind of carve up through the city. And again, I think with these narrow bars, this bike would make a perfect filtering machine. You know, I oh, think absolutely. that would be the case for it. So I was really impressed with it in the city. How about the cons? Anything that you don't love about it in the city? Well, I think this tire and torque combination, something about it for me, I get a lot of rear wheel slip on this bike. Now, as a more experienced rider, I think it's kind of fun. I quick a little, you know, little <laughs> right hand turn, just get the rear out a little bit. But um, overall, I think that would make for a poor riding experience for someone who's a little more, you know, green to the sport. Absolutely. And some final thoughts on the day. Which bike? would you buy if it was your money on the table? You know, we spent the day with these bikes and I originally thought that I was gonna be head over heels with the SV650X and I still really like it a lot, but this bike's grown a lot on me yeah. um, in more ways than one. I think this bike makes a really strong case for itself as a competent, all around, great naked bike you can own and ride for a long time. This is the type of bike I could see someone getting and spending two years with easy. Oh, absolutely. You know, really getting into it, doing a couple mods, having fun with it. It's a really competent motorcycle. And the more you ride it, the more it surprises you with like, man, this thing is really great, you know? So mm -hmm. if it were my money, I think I'd get the Z, honestly. What about you? I think that's actually where I'm sitting too. The SV650 is great, but this SV650X package is not to my liking. Yeah. The clip-ons are a little bit tough to live with for me. The seat sucks. There's a lot about it that I love, how big it feels, how long it feels over the Z, but at the end of the day, the Z is a more comfortable, more fun motorcycle. It does have its flaws, the vibration, the small size. Hell, maybe a Z900 would feel really good to us. Maybe. But the Z650 being the one that we're testing today, I'd have to take that motorcycle. I think this is the one for today. Thanks to Cardo for supporting what we do. We rely on their comm systems to produce our dual vlogs, and Spite and I literally use ours every time we go ride on the street. It's easy to pair up with your buddies, it works across different comm systems, you can listen to music, the battery life is insanely long, and I love it. In fact, Spite had a Cardo before he started working at Yami Noob, and so did Andrew, so you know it must be good. If you check them out in the description below and use the code Yami, you'll get 20% off your order. Support the folks who support us to make the finest motorcycle content on the internet at a daily rate. Again, that's code Yammy at checkout using the link below to get 20% off your order. Well, howdy, partner. How's it going? Now, this video is over, but I'll tell you what, you click on this one right over here, you can keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. Now, if y'all didn't know, we're based out of Austin, Texas, so click on that video, you might check out something cool.